Hi everyone, I'm Josh. And I'm Heather. And we are from Try Hard Enthusiast on Instagram. And this is going to be pickup video number three. Uh, Slightly smaller than the last couple. Yeah, I mean, for the most part. It's not a lot of big stuff. But I feel like the past two pickup videos we've had have been a lot of collector's editions, a lot of large boxed items. Yeah. Whereas this is mostly just games. Mostly just games. Which All right. ahead and start. So the first, like, eight of these are kind of funny. <laughs> um, so in the last video, I had a collection of Splinter Cell games for the PS2. I started getting the PS3 ones. So we have Splinter Cell Double Agent and Blacklist. And there's another game which I realized after buying these ones is only Xbox. So, I started collecting the games for the Xbox. So we have the original three for the Xbox, plus Double Agent, which apparently is released on both the Xbox and the Xbox 360. Well, that one, that one was released, what, Xbox, PS2, Xbox 360, PS3, yep. GameCube. Uh, and we also have the 360 version of it, because, of I course. I want to say that was also Game Boy Advance in, I don't think it was PSP, but I know it was like damn near every console, because it was right at the console switching. Yes. And I also got Conviction, which is the one that is Xbox exclusive. Um, I do have Blacklist for the 360 coming. It's in the mail. Um, it has like a two month window in which it can be delivered for some reason. It's coming from Canada. I'm sure it's a customs thing, but. Yeah, we, we found that, you know, depending on the shipping, sometimes you can get items just a smidge cheaper if you order them from Canada, but you're gonna pay more for shipping and you're gonna have a, a little bit longer of a wait time, but sometimes it, it evens out. I also believe it's sealed and it comes from a company that benefits charity, so why not? Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll start with the PS2 next. First game on top, and I did not grab the peripheral for it, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> Everybody knows what it is. There's a claim sale on Instagram, and I want to say this one was from 16-bit uh, artifacts, I want to say is the, the guy's screen name. But one of the games that I had purchased, ah, there we go, is Tycho Drum Master. This is a game that I've been wanting to get for the PS4, but it's just stupid expensive and it is Japanese only. So I, I did not feel like paying $600 for Tycho Drum Master. And uh, that, that was a much more acceptable price. <laughs> yep. The next game we got, this game is a little divisive. Or divisive? Controversial. Controversial. Ish. I don't know. Uh, I don't even know if the device is a real word. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's definitely not a fan favorite of the series, and I believe it's the last of the actual mainline ga main line games. Cause this killed it pretty much. Debatable. There's a bunch of them on the DS and phone ports. Yeah. And... But it is Dawn of Mana. Um. I love the Mana series. Is this sealed or just resealed? No, it's sealed. Okay, it is sealed. <laughs> um, I've always been a big fan of the Mana series ever since the second game on the Super Nintendo. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to actually playing through all the other ones that we either never got or just were oddball. And unfortunately, it was just one of those games that fell to the, hey guys, let's try something new. Oh, well, that didn't work. Let's try another thing new. Oh, nope, that killed the series. Mmm, sorry. <laughs> Definitely the best is Trials, which... Mm. Mm. Okay. Do we have that in here? Tri trials? No? We talked about the last one. Did we? It was in the last one. There. Because that's all part of the same. Yeah. You want to go with yours? Sure. Um, so next, we have Yanya Cal... Kabbalista? I can never pronounce it. I've tried saying it in my head 15,000 different times. Kabbalista? <laughs> but 
but it is a oh. skateboarding game. And if you see right there, it's actually supposed to come with a fingerboard peripheral that sits right on the two joysticks. And that is how you control the character and attack. I like really oddball obscure games. I can't help it. And actually one of my buddies on Instagram posted this and that's where I got the idea to even look for it. But uh, unfortunately I sat too long on a copy that did have the skateboard in it. Yeah. That's a little sad. <laughs> so these next five I bought as a lot from the seller in Vermont that we've been purchasing a lot of stuff from. Which actually there's a few other things in here from him. Um, I mainly bought this lot for one game, but a couple of them look interesting. So we have Genji, Dawn of the Samurai. Which is, will focus. Which is essentially just a Onimusha it's, clone type uh, yeah, game. Yeah, more or less. Uh, 13. Which looks very interesting. It's like comic book graphics. I, I really wanted to get that on the GameCube. I might um, still try to find that. But. The Sega Genesis Collection. A game I really don't know much about, but it would be a little oddball to play. It'd be Sphinx. It'd be fun just to play it, see what it's like. And the reason I bought the whole thing is Disgaea 2. Um, never really been a huge fan of strategy RPGs, but I've started getting into them. Uh, I've been playing Disgaea 5 on the Switch lately. Really enjoy it, especially the, the quirkiness of the characters and... Um, Just their banter, yeah. honestly. <laughs> I figure I'd give some other ones a try and see how I like them. And then this one came in not too long after the last video, but finally have Dragon Guard 2. So this completes out the Dragon Guard series in our collection as well as Nier. At least I'm pretty sure we didn't do this in the last video. I don't remember. We might have. Either way. It came out. I mean, we got it right around the time of the last video, so. And th this one's been if eluding. If we already showed it off, we're sorry. <laughs> it's been eluding us for a while, so got that another one that I've been looking for and just trying to find it at the right price is fun is Samurai Shampoo uh, Sidetrack it's an amazing show have you watched the show I have not watched the show but I've seen oh, yeah. tidbits of the game and it looks really good it's almost it almost looks similar to uh, Afro Samurai a little bit yeah the show is really good and then last I ended up getting this from a buddy on Instagram. He's been going through a whole bunch of his backlog right now <laughs> and realizing there's a lot of games in his collection that he just doesn't necessarily care for. And one of them was Steambot Chronicles and just happens to be one of the games that I have been looking for. So uh, it is complete. So that's one of my high dollar holy grail items to knock off the list. Next, let's move on to PS3. PS3. These are a lot of oddball games. Yeah, I'll just do this one real quick. So this doesn't kind of go with the rest of the theme of the PS3 games. This is Red Faction, the oh, complete. And this one has, oh crap, which ones? It has Gorilla and Armageddon, and it has the digital code for um, 1 and 2 on it. We still need to get one, and that'll be the last game to finish out that collection. Uh, this also kind of doesn't go with this oddball one, but um, to go along with Genji on the PS2, we also have Genji on the PS3. So, not sure how many are actually in this series. I really think it was only the two, because just looking it up on a couple of the, the web pages like Luki's E Star, I. Can only really find the two it's games in that series. Well, I guess it's just the eye. Never mind. Yeah. The eye looks like a Roman numeral. So. It wouldn't surprise me. Right. So the rest of these games, we've been buying games that don't necessarily have a good reputation or weren't well received upon release because 
but they've been gaining more of a following later in their life. Yes, and also, I mean, a lot of these have really, really interesting concepts, and we want to have our own opinion of them. We don't want to just go by what people on YouTube say because, I mean, let, let's be real. A lot of times on YouTube, you get more views if you have negative opinions on games and you just rip it a new one, so. Yeah, we've watched a lot of videos on some of these and they actually look kind of fun, so. Worst case scenario, we'll get and a good laugh. The, the one we watched, the guy went into it, it's like, this game sucks, and he was having a blast playing it, mm -hmm. so. Um, do you want to start? I don't know anything about most of these. <laughs> uh, well, we did Probably watch this one. So this one is Hunted. Oh, yeah. And it's a Bethesda game, so really need, need we say more. But yeah. it, it's a game that looks like it should be a two... Oh no, it is a two player. I didn't <laughs> think this was a two player. I thought they said this was one player. I mean, it's two characters. So no, yeah. it's two player. Player yeah, two. I see. <laughs> so, so that's fun. That would make this a lot more um, interesting because this game... The story and dialogue in this game just looks like B-movie dialogue <laughs> is so corny and predictable, but at the same time, it's just like, this is great. Let's put it this way. When they were playing the very beginning of the game, they got to this one point where there, there's like a lot of cover fire type areas in the game, and they stood there and there was a ditch between the cover and where the enemies went, and they all spawned in the exact same spot over and over and over again. There was like six of them. <laughs> so you didn't even have to move the reticle, you just sit there and wait. <laughs> yeah. Is this two player? No, that's one player. No, that one's one player. Uh, so this one just has an interesting concept because the main character you play as is, he's immortal, so he can't die, but he can get um, More or less incapacitated, kind of. Yeah. He gets knocked out for a little bit. And the whole concept is you have essentially an escort with you throughout the entire game that you have to keep alive because she can die. Mm -hmm. um, and it is called Knight's Contract. It kind of looked like it had sort of like Devil May Cry-ish. It reminds me kind of of Darksiders a little bit. Mm. I can see that. I think it's Darksiders. Yeah, Dark. With the... Like it just hack and slash kind of combat exploration. Um, some of the finishing moves that the two can do together are freaking insane. Like remember they pulled out you're... a giant guillotine for the Yeah, the, the escort that you you have with you as a witch, so she can summon all kinds of weird, crazy shit. Mm -hmm. um, and the guy has this huge, like, mechanical scythe that he attacks it's with. Really, really cool. Yeah. First I thought it was an accident, like, he pulled off his back and it extended, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> um, Let you do that one. This game actually came in... Is this the one that came in? Yeah. Yeah, this came with one of my, my PS3 Splinter Cell a lot that I got. Um, didn't know anything about it, but... Um, it's from Obsidian. It's, it's a... I guess a spy game, I mean... It's an esp espionage RPG, is what it's called. But it is Alpha Protocol. Um, it looked like it had promise. Yeah. It'd be interesting just to play it and see what it's, what it's about. Uh, it was essentially just a pack-in with a game that I actually wanted to play, so. Mm -hmm. Next we have, it's an RPG from NIS America, and that is The Last Rebellion. Um, I honestly cannot remember why this one got such a bad reception. I want to say it's just doesn't have like a super enthusiastic story, same typical rpg tropes but i mean the artwork and the colors that they use with it really drew me in and draws me in every time i see it so i figured i might as well just pick it up since i yeah. like collecting rpgs for the most part so um so this next one is actually from lucas arts um, it's got an interesting mechanic in it it's called fracture uh, essentially you can control the ground around you and stuff. You have a, I think it's the gun that does it, but you can like shoot the ground and grow a hill so you can get into another area or use it to attack, I believe. It was like, um, I think you have a grenades, grenades. too that can do stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it just looks interesting. 
So this one, this one is Haze. This one I know always gotten a, a bad reception. But if I remember right, this is the one where they're constantly fed drugs through the suit itself that yeah. enables their powers. And you can essentially get like, almost go insane from the drug or something yeah, like that. Yeah, if you use it too often. Yeah. But I mean, it's just another interesting concept that I guess wasn't executed well from what people have said, but. Yeah. Um, this, one. this is actually Square Enix. It is Mind Jack. That one I think we're just gonna get a good laugh off of. Yeah, this is another one where the, the dialogue and stuff is just B-movie <laughs> all the way, but you can essentially hack people's minds and then control them to fight mm -hmm. the other enemies and stuff. Which is an interesting concept, but... It's really cool, um, but you just gotta execute it, it right. It was execute right. <laughs> this next game, <laughs> this is from EA, this had a that lot one, of hype behind it. That one next, actually doesn't have a bad reception. No, it didn't. It wasn't received well either. Um, Not as bad as the rest of these. Probably because this was this was overhyped a lot. Partly because of the people behind it and the person who stars in it. Yeah. But <laughs> it looks really fun. It just gameplay wise, I think it wasn't what people expected it to be. Mm. It turned out to be a completely different game from what people thought it was going to be. And that is Brutal Legend. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to play a game with Jack Black? <laughs> yeah, yes. And guitars and demons. And Ozzy. I mean, Who I, else is it? I always uh, thought it looked really fun when I worked at GameStop and that came out. Yeah. I just never had the opportunity, opportunity to play it. I can it. barely read this writing. It's so small. Let me see. Where? I can see Lemmy. Lemmy? Where? Where? Where am I looking? Up here. Up here? Well, because you're... Wait, wait. That is the English part. Yeah, I was looking at the, the bottom part. <laughs> Rob Halford, Lemmy, and more. Yeah. So, yeah. A bunch of just metal legends. So, yeah. That one would be it's really fun to play. Yeah. I mean, you can. One of your attacks is a headbang, so. <laughs> Alright, while you're putting those up. I guess move on the PS4 since we only have a couple of those this time. Yep. Uh, this is a game that I didn't realize had become extremely hard to find and has greatly retained its value, which made it fun to look for. But that is a way out. And honestly, I think the reason why this is so hard to find is not a lot of people slept on it like we did. Like it was a game that we wanted to buy when it came out. We just never really got a. a to the point of ordering it and now that everybody's at home and wants games to play together mm. i mean what's what's the best thing to do than a two-player movie essentially yeah two-player co-op game where it has a really interesting ending it's really sad and i know i spoiled it for myself but it, it's, it's okay <laughs> it's sad uh this next game oh so i've been a huge dragon ball fan pretty much all my, all my life and I haven't been watching Super, which I really need to start watching Super, <laughs> hint, hint. Okay. Um, but I debated on buying this one because I'm not a big fighter genre uh, gamer. I like them, just I don't get into them, especially the newer ones because they make the mechanics way too crazy. <laughs> but this one always looks interesting, appeal. and it is Dragon Ball Fighters or Fighter Z, however they want to say it. Um, I feel like I've seen every combination of Sonic. Yeah. It looks really, really fun and mostly true to the art style, of, well, one of the many art styles of the game or show. Just over the top like Dragon Ball normally is. It's basically Street Fighter with Dragon Ball characters. Yeah. So, I mean, who? <laughs> of course. Um, this next one is actually a PlayStation VR game. Uh, we've been slowly building up our VR collection. We don't play it a lot because it's just it's a lot to clear space for it, and um, and usually I'm hogging it playing Beat Saber, so. and <laughs> can only play it in s short increments. Mm -hmm. um, but this game looked really good. It's fairly short and story driven with some mm -hmm. combat action in it, but it just looks amazing. And it is Blood and Truth. 
I think I'm gonna have fun playing this one because it just it's like an action movie and a VR game. Yeah. Wanna do? Go ahead and do that. All right. And then we'll start. This is our only Sega Genesis game. Mm -hmm. Is this complete? This is complete. Yes. Uh, <laughs> let's go along with the fighting games. This is a game I grew up with. Um, back when fighting games were somewhat simple. That is more combat on the Genesis. So this is a complete copy. Um, Probably one of the cleanest Genesis games I've seen in a while. But then again, yeah. I'm pretty sure it came out of somebody's collection. It was out of the Stone's same tab. same lot as. Well, oh, the case does have a crack in it right there, so it doesn't close right. No, it's fine. But that came with um, Tyco Drum Master and two other games that I have. Hmm. So I'll get these out. I'm doing these last, but I'll get these out of the way. Okay. So we do have two GameCube games. The first one was just a condition upgrade because it has the manual and all the paperwork. But Evolution's Worlds, like I said, just need the manual for it. And it's actually in really good shape, surprisingly. I can't remember if I looked at the disc to see if that's a condition upgrade too. And then the other one, so I'm kind of glad that I went and got GameCube games a couple weeks back. <laughs> oh my god, it, yeah. are the prices inflated on everything like everything right now. Nintendo is like jumping. It's bad. Like, it's really bad now. But one of the last GameCube games I picked up was F-Zero GX. Uh, I've always loved F-Zero X. Never got a chance to play this on the GameCube and never got to... Not, yeah. I cannot talk today. <laughs> never got a chance to play the Super Nintendo game, which I might as well just unbury that. So yeah, got the Super Nintendo copy too. But I never got a chance to play either of these, and I mean, it's one of my favorite racing games. So I figured, why the hell not? And this is in really good shape. A lot of the, the Super Nintendo it's copies are in... Almost one of the best condition boxes we have for Super Nintendo. Yeah, a lot about. of the Super Nintendo ones were in really, really good shape on eBay. Actually, there's a lot of sealed copies of that floating around on eBay for like 50 bucks. I can believe it. So, uh, you want to do these? I want to save these for last, too. Okay, so I got a few Vita games and a Switch game. And a Dreamcast game. And a Dreamcast game. Expensive Dreamcast game, but. So, I figured. Go ahead, pick up Steins Gate for the Vita. This is both of the games that we had released in the US. I almost want to say that there's a third one in Japan. Um, I, I like visual novel games, and I've always heard that this is a very under, like a popular underrated series, if that makes any sort of sense. Yep. But I uh, figured might as well get the Switch copy too to go ahead and compare the the two because if I'm not mistaken this is the remaster of the first one not necessarily the second one is this the first one yes this is the first one <laughs> well I get confused because this one is Steins Gate Zero and literally the only way you can tell is the odd uh, like obscure zero in the background yeah but got those two and then this one I believe was a dungeon crawler but it's just demon gaze uh, it was pretty cheap. Figured why not add more RPG. Eh, titties. Eh. <laughs> but I figured might as well go ahead and add more games to the Vita since I don't really feel like I have enough. And then... Dreamcast All right. game. So this is one of the only actual RPGs on the Dreamcast. Very sought after. There was a remake. There's a re release on yes, GameCube. Yes, there is a re release on the GameCube, which oh. is easily, I'd say, twice as expensive depending on yeah. the, the day. Yeah, no, the case doesn't want to stay close. close all um, the way. Never played this. Ooh. Kind of looks like fun. A lot of people hype it up as one of the best pretty much ever. Mm -hmm. So, it is Skies of Arcadia. Another game that I I really wanted to get the GameCube copy. Just it's supposed to be remastered. It's supposed to be the better version of it. But I mean, if I come across the Dreamcast copy of something or the PS2 copy of something, and 
it makes sense to get it, then it's just... Plus, I always love just throwing Dreamcast some love, because it's a system I've always enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, Wouldn't mind digging it out and actually playing through some of those games a little yeah. bit. Yeah. All right. PS1. We got a lot of uh, interesting games, because the seller on eBay likes to constantly send us, Hey, guys! Was it five percent that he always likes to give? Or? He always has five percent. Um, always five percent every time. Always. <laughs> uh, the majority of these come from the seller from Vermont that we buy a lot of stuff from because he just seems to have a ton of. Except um, for one. Things we want. No, two of these. Uh, yeah, that one and that one. Okay. Um, so this first one actually just came in today, like an hour ago kind of confused me that mail showed up on Memorial Day, but uh, <laughs> this is Medieval 2. Um, actually never played the second one, I played the first one, which I believe we showed off in the last video. Because mm -hmm, we had both, or we had at least the PS4 remake, I don't know if we showed off the original. Yeah. But. And another series I grew up with and absolutely love is the Mega Man X series. This is five. Um, this one I've not played, but I mean, it's Mega Man. It doesn't hurt to hold the old copies. I mean, Grant, we, we do uh, have all I do believe it the... was after this one when they started to really kind of go downhill. They started changing art styles and... We can um, always find out. We've got all the collections. Yeah, that's why collection, <laughs> that's why on the collections five, six, and seven, or five, six, seven, eight, or on the second copy because <laughs> mm -hmm. they're not the best games so one of the two Four games the that didn't come from the uh, Vermont seller is actually Breath of Fire 4 uh, actually ended up getting this from a seller in Canada so it took a little bit longer to come in but out of the ones I've seen gameplay of I really like the art style in this it's I don't want to say it's necessarily watercolor but it's not your typical anime, bright, bubbly, clean lines. Like, yeah. I don't know. I really thought it looked nice. Uh, next up, we got Wild Arms 2. Another game I've never played, but I've s we've played one of them. No, we, we have three. Ooh, that's coming out. Oh no. Uh, we have Wild Arms 3. Um, I'm not sure when they started using the like the honeycomb style grid, but some of the later games have a really interesting combat style that I thought would be cool to. Yeah, apparently take a look some of the later ones are really broken on some of the characters. Mm -hmm. I like most um, series, but <laughs> yeah. So this next one I bought because uh, we already have one of the collections. Um, oh, blank. It's the one that has Chrono Trigger and yeah. six, five. Is it five? No, this is five. That's five and six. So the other one has. Four? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, really? this is the Final Fantasy Anthology collection. Mainly got this because I mean, Final Fantasy VI is my favorite Final Fantasy of all time, mm -hmm. and in my opinion, the best one ever that they've done. Even better than the remake. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Six is so much better than seven. I don't care what people say. Seven's great, but six just has a much better story. I think. Um, although, from what I've read, this is not the best copy of this game. If I want to play the best copy, I'll just pull out the Super Nintendo one, because mm -hmm. it's right there. Okay, do you want to do this one? I can do this one. So this one, same seller, but uh, picked up another copy of Grandia 1. Mostly just because we needed the manual. Yep. <laughs> our other copy didn't have the manual, and our, was it disc 2, I think? Had a couple top scratches, which 
Top scratches on a PS1 game can either mean death or just Nothing. not look pretty. I mean, right. depends on the day. So this next one's another series that I personally have never played. Um, they look amazing from gameplay that I've seen. It's not a series that I necessarily ever cared to get into, yeah. honestly. A lot of people swear that this series is the best ever. I mean, it's the same with Scottish Arcadia. It really it depends on preference. Mm -hmm. Also a series that people don't seem to understand how to pronounce the name, which I don't know either. So, uh, <laughs> I've heard it pronounced so many different ways. Um, that is Suikoden or Suikoden or any of the other variations of how people pronounce this. Honestly, I think you got it right the first I time. I believe it is Suikoden. But this is complete. Mm -hmm. Yes. It always throws me off when they use a four disc case for a one disc game. I don't understand it. I know some people have said that they've, they've had theories that it has to do with the size of the manual, but I mean, I wouldn't think that would... This manual's not that big. I mean, that's a standard size manual. I'm, I am just saying what the people says. Yeah. I don't get it. Especially when Skies of Arcadia is a two disc and it's in a one disc game case. Okay. Dreamcast made it fit. <laughs> well, yeah, they got a thing in the middle. All right, so we have one N64 game this time. Nothing to set the world on fire with, but picked up a copy of Monster Truck Madness 64. I absolutely love this game. There's a game mode on here called Chicken, and it literally turns your truck into a chicken. Oh, God. Yes. Oh, we are going to have so much fun with that. And then there's cheat codes where you can turn the vehicles into hover cars and fly all over. Oh, man. Talk about some uh, shenanigans. Hmm. So our next pickup that we got is an original DS. One of the few handhelds that we did not have. Which came with a copy of Dave Mirror, which... That was just for ha -ha's. Yeah. It, it was one of the cleaner looking DS's on eBay at the time. And it has the stylus. Which is a minor miracle. Not that it matters, because it's not going to have the stylus forever. No, I I actually... Hopefully. So I have ordered it's a really clean. capture card board for that, because when you hack 3DSs, it will not play DS games. The program just crashes every single time, no matter what you try to do. So I did order a capture board for it. Whether or not it comes in is a whole other matter. I still have not heard anything on it. We'll see. But if it does, then I'll be able to stream DS games. Like this one! I <laughs> uh, got this, another game I got from my buddy on Instagram, Soul of a Robo. It is complete. It is expensive. It is wacky. But it, it looks really cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, I don't know. It's Bright a colors. Dog and a robot. And, and shenanigans just make me buy stuff, okay? Yep. Can't help it. <laughs> And then we have uh, one more, or just one period, Saturn game. It's Impact Racing. I uh, got this on a claim sale on Instagram. The only Ooh, careful with that case. Uh, it's, it's actually not the original case. Okay. It's a replacement case. <laughs> but it is complete. Uh, Saturn cases and CD, oh their second CD God. cases are brittle. You look at them the wrong way and they just disintegrate. But uh, this is actually a really cool game because the cars have like machine guns on them. And although it's a racing game, it, it's it's like a, like grip, but not like grip. You got weapons, you race stuff. You have weapons and grip, you just didn't use them. I know, that's what I'm saying. It's like grip, but it's not like grip, where you have weapons. Okay. Do you want to just? I can. Or you want me to do it? You can do it, huh? Um, so the next thing we got is a Neo Geo Mini. Which... Maybe it'll turn on? Maybe the battery's dead? Oh, I think the battery died on it already. Probably. But yeah, Corey, Corey Sally posted that they had a sale on Amazon. It was only like 30 bucks, I think. Yeah. I mean, if you like fighting games, SNK. They're, they're not for their fighting games. But it doesn't have the clicky stick. 
Mm. But does not have the cookie stick that Neo Geo is known for. And that's people's probably biggest gripe with that. And these buttons are so close together. Like, yeah. But you can put it on your TV, so. Yeah, their design choice for that was weird, but it's it's another mini collection. I can get you a book. Uh, I got a book. <laughs> so this is a Super Nintendo Player's Guide. This has a collection of just like little excerpts about different games. Um, it's not the whole collection, it's just some. Uh, just like little tips, trips. Like trips. they have the map for uh, Link to the Past in it. So it's just an interesting little collector's item. That's pretty cool. First time I opened this, it, I automatically flipped to the Super R Type page. It's like, oh, that's Super R Type, <laughs> which I thought was cool. They actually have a couple different versions of that. They made one for the Super Game Boy, I think, which is really random. Um, Game Boy, yeah. NES. Super R Type. <laughs> I can't remember if they made any other ones, but. All right, then as far as books, the last two that I have, which I made a short video already on Instagram TV, and that would be a sealed copy of Wind Waker, Collector's Edition Guide, and a Link Between Worlds. And these are the ones with the pretty, pretty gold sides on them. You gonna open it? You wanna open it? You can open it if you want. Okay. Not right now. All right, and the last couple of items. So, I know the last video I showed that I got the um, Zoids Infinity EX Neo, which is a Japanese region locked game. So, I bought a Japanese PS or PS3. That is definitely not a PS3. <laughs> I got a Japanese Xbox 360. Can you tell she's a PlayStation girl? I like PlayStation so much better. Grant, this is one of like the first major modern consoles I got once I finally started playing video games again was a 360. But um, yep, my 360 finally came in and interestingly enough, had a copy of Blast Blue in it, which I did not know was in there. Uh, the seller didn't mention anything about it being included. And that being it's not on the box flight. anywhere either. No. I mean, and the other thing with this that we were Clearly a little... it was supposed to be there because it had a cutout for it. I think, but it nothing's mentioned about it. That's why I was so confused. Mm. Um, one thing I was sort of ish concerned by, but not really. Like, we've gotten Japanese PlayStation Vitas before and the power cores work just fine. Being that I know there's a little bit difference with um, yeah. voltage and whatnot between US and Japan. But from what I've looked into, and we we looked for a good long time the other night, it looks like the power bricks for the Japanese and the US consoles are the same as long as you're using the one specifically for the slim. Because literally every three of the, um, or every generation of the Xbox 360 has a different voltage or wattage. Yeah. For the power bricks so it doesn't necessarily just matter stupid. yeah it doesn't necessarily matter which country it comes from just as long as you're using the one for that system but uh with that i had actually also ordered cyber trooper virtual on number four which is force and this is sealed which i didn't for now i didn't buy it used i bought or i didn't buy it new <laughs> i bought it used i'm having issues here today okay you have lots of issues <laughs> I am an issue, but uh, I bought this used and it came sealed, so I I'm not too hateful about it. It is very dusty though. Poor, poor game's probably been sitting behind some bookcase in Japan somewhere. Mm. Actually, do you want to grab me my, my, my model real quick? Cause that is totally- Only if I can show off mine. But that one's at least video game related. So I did get one model in and I pre-ordered it. It actually came in a month late, but that's, you know, with the state of the world and everything, it's kind of understandable. But I got in finally my Luden model 
from Gundam Planet. Oh, camera, you do not like this box at all. There we go. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just so cool looking and I just need to A, put it together and B, find a spot back here somewhere to set yeah. it up once it's together. And this is from Kojima Productions. I mean, everybody knows who Kojima is. Yeah. It's a little... A little I still have loon. no idea what a freaking Luden is, but... So you actually have to look it up. It, it's based off of a 18... 1918 or 1800s story. And it has something to do about a generation led by people who play rather than, you know, just sit back and take things as it is. I don't know, it, it's an interesting thing to look up if you've got free time. Yeah. Oh! I know something else we forgot if you want to dig him out. You can talk about Kongle. Oh god, yes. <laughs> so, this is totally improv. It's not great. Break everything oh else. no. Don't knock everything over. So, we ordered another Legend of Dragon figure. Which, yeah, I know, but they look pretty. I'll, I'll put it up later. Okay, so. <laughs> Last I thing, ordered, I swear. Yeah. I ordered this figure off of eBay. It was supposedly brand new in the box. Which you could look at the pictures and tell, like, that thing sat on a shelf and looked pretty all day. Yeah. Probably gonna include the pictures as B-roll. <laughs> yeah. When we got the box in, the shipping box looked like it had been ripped in half and retaped together. Mm -hmm. Open it up and there's this nice little plastic bag from the um, Post United Post. States Postal Service saying, oh, we are sorry about the damage to your product. Sometimes it cannot be avoided, blah, 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 blah. And the back for the figure, the cardboard backing, was literally just folded in half and shoved in the box. Yeah. That, that was the first thing I saw when I opened the box, because he was like, still at work. I ended up calling him about this. Yeah, and, and it's like, what in the hell? So, <laughs> we took him apart. Or, it's Kong. I don't think she said that. But we... Which, mind you, the cardboard was by itself. There was still all the packing material he managed to shove back in there. Yeah. And then the plastic with Kongo and the other stuff was shoved in a poly bag in the bottom. Yeah. He himself was still in the actual package that the he comes in. Which is impressive. His axe was not. Mm -mm. The axe handle is missing. It was lost somewhere in the damaging of the figure. And I messaged the seller. The seller was pissed. Um, but they were he nice. refunded my money. Never asked to send it back, but he put in a insurance claim for the damage, which is understandable, because this was not cheap. Um, mm -hmm. But then, a little bit later, for HaHa's, I went to take him out of the packaging to see if we can just display him some, just out of the, the packaging, and his leg fell off. So, he came out of the package completely when the damage to the box occurred, and the people and the post service put him back in the package in the way that it looked like he was fine when they snapped his leg off. Yeah. So, I mean, we were able to get the package and everything back together so it's somewhat display worthy, but it was a little disappointing. It, it's the principle and it's one of those things where even though it doesn't look that bad on the shelf, it's just the fact that we know that this thing is fucking wrecked in my language but um yeah and it's the only one that we actually have that has the sony sticker on it too the rest of them don't even have the the sony entertainment sticker on them mm -hmm. so yeah oh, sorry doggo it was a little disappointing um but on the other side of that we essentially got this for free out of it because he like said the seller refunded the money didn't want it back or didn't say anything about it to getting the product back because I mean, At this point, it's it's not really sellable for profit. Yeah. So. Right. Well, I think I think that is legit. Actually, everything. Can't think. Of, I think so. Can't think of anything else that's been put off on the shelf. If there's anything else, it's not in this room, and I'm not gonna go get it. That is okay. 
Oh, there's that. Yeah, not even necessarily video game related. No. But. So yeah, that, that's... <laughs> what is that? What about that? What the heck? <laughs> we have so much stuff. Yeah, we actually have the office together now. I, I put up a quick Instagram story on that. Yeah, I need to build more shelves. <laughs> I got wood to... Um, Finish this off. Finish our our desk here and add like a game shelf on it. Sweet. All right. Well, I think oh. I think that's everything for this pickup video. Keep tuned. We I'll have a uh, gameplay of Grip either yeah. up before this or after this. It all depends on which one I end up working on first. And hopefully we'll have more Let's Play and gameplay videos coming up soon. So, great guys. Yep. Thank you for watching. Make sure you uh, subscribe if you like our content. Like, comment, and subscribe. Surprise. Subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. All right, guys. See ya. See ya. <laughs>